this episode, we leave the busy shipping port of Dampier, visiting Norbul Bay in the Dampier Archipelago, before sailing to the Montebello Islands. We have the iron ore mine over the back here. Is everything as red dust. It is everywhere. It's on the boat. Everywhere. Don't like to wash the boat with salt, but don't want the red dust staining everything off, so. Commence dredging operations south of Tree Whiskey Beacon. Advice please stay well clear and give a white bird over. Uh, yes, Romeo, that um, once the uh, vessel uh, Vera Cruz has passed through, we will cut very west as well and go clear of the channel. Thanks, sir. So we've got our ship coming in. We've had the radio about VTS. We've got our dredging boat waiting, standing by for him to pass, for him to start dredging out here. We've got to maintain clear of him. Alley Cat and Layla will keep him over here out of the channel, but he's actually coming down outside the channel near them. So it's rather exciting at the moment. Here he is up here. So we have the dredge over to the right and the iron ore ship coming in. Um, and so we have instruction that we will pass to the stern. <laughs> Alicat and Taylor have had to go right out wide on the other side of the uh, West Cardinal into the no-go area for me, the bottom. So we'll pass behind this boat now and we'll be good. So I was just looking at boat names around me and I was looking for another boat that's towing a at the moment and I found a sea wind I went oh sea wind one distance at first I thought 1160 <laughs> that's 11.6 mile so yeah it's almost a sister ship only problem is I actually click on its details it's a cargo ship 46 meters long so it's a little bit bigger than a sea wind and he's very close she's a big boy she's just off about to be dwarfed by an island Dots in the horizon disappearing. What's up? It's caught. And he's like, oh, he's just climbed out. He's like, oh, it's caught. And it's caught on the lazy jack. So now he's raced up. No one's controlling the boat because he's just j jumped up. He had to get the sails up first. <laughs> We've just left Dampier, we've just come to our first little bay, having a swim, just chilling, and a school group of kids from Perth came up. So they're in little sailing boats and they're spending three days sailing around the islands and camping out. Must be pretty cool, it's a pretty cool experience for them. And the oldies are floating in the water. I said the oldies are sitting in the water. The oldies on the beach. No, the oldies are floating in the water. Now remote, uninhabited beach. We had a pretty good snorkel yesterday. A couple of cold trout and some nice cray. So we're going back and today we're going to take the GoPro. We're going to video a bit of it so you can see what it's like and what we're catching in. Well, hopefully you can see the bottom. And hopefully we can find them again. Because we had a really windy night last night. Right, we had 25-ish knots. 25. Beautiful now, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's only dropped off since sunrise. Yeah, big rock. Still blowing at sunrise. Well, wasn't a great sleep. I know well. Now we'll just light up the tender. Yeah. Loading the stuff up. Where we go. We're good. Are you going for a coral tart? Are you going for a spear gun? Yeah, I've got the spear gun again. In case we see fish. And you might want it in case there's a shark. Spear it and get towed along. You had one yesterday. Yeah, big one. Yeah. Also, then for the bite, so three metres. I don't mm -hmm. know what it was, but it was big. It took off though, so it wasn't scary. Alright, let's go. Help me along with the boat, love. It might just be my oh, big stinger. He's legging it. Alright, we got.
So, how many did you get? And we caught a few cray and a couple of coral trout. Four feet, stuck his hand in the hole, not looking. Straight into a sea urchin again, so he's got a little spot in his Oh, not good. again. Second time. He doesn't want to play with sea urchins anymore. Did he learn from the first one? So, yeah, it was good, so he showed the cray. That's tonight's dinner. There were part heaps. of tonight's dinner. There were heaps of cray. And where's the fish? In the sink. There's coral trout. Bastard. Look at that, blood! Don't put oh. that in the food though, I don't want any blood in the food. Got much of this leg stuff getting in there. Alright. <laughs> Are you eating it? Most, Joe, Joe, it's mostly going in there. Someone that's eating it fast that's one eating. lot of our meal. There's all the bits that the boys are just eating Look now. How spiny they are. They're, sn they're snacking Very on. Very spiny. Snacking on them. Oh, do you know, I've got crayfish. I've got crayfish. Um, Pliers. Yeah, I just don't know where they are. I see one, it just keeps going into your mouth, not into the bowl though. Well, I'm waiting for the blood to stop. <laughs> see, he can't put oh yeah, don't put there. blood in the bowl. It's... That blood in the bowl doesn't go in. The boys, the boys are making, doing the fish. <laughs> Lynette's supervising. But no, Chris, no, trout, Chris knows fish. what he's doing and he does this all the time anyway. Oh, so we're having fish, crayfish and salad oh, for tea tonight. Fish. So we have got a full on feast of fish and crayfish and salad. Coral trout, not just coral fish. Trout. Oh, coral, coral trout. Panko crumbs, coral trout. Panko crumbs. And we've got some really nice, look at that spread. Mm. That okay. is pretty cool. It's not even covering. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, it goes. Oh, oh, it's ripped ready. Oh, oh, I'm ready to face the other. Hang on, tie it up. Tie it up. I'm going to tie him up. Yeah. Oh, you're going to a toga party. There you go. <laughs> toga, toga. Oh, we have about 20, 21, 22 knots of wind. Yeah, oh, face the elements. <laughs> okay. I've got my torch. Ian, stop it! Ian! Oh, that's awful! <laughs> Pete, at least you, you guys at least got a decent jacket on. Pete, look at Pete, look, he's all, he's all rubbed up. Sun just rising behind us, which is not showing very well. There we go. The sun is just rising behind us, and we're heading out to the Montebellos. We left at five o'clock this morning, so a little bit early. I'm not a big fan of those, but uh, these aren't too bad. A reasonable run. Way already, about two thirds away, I reckon. So, about another three and a half hours to go. And someone's been a bit sleepy today. A few waves, Eddie. It's almost 12 o'clock. We've been travelling for seven hours and we're just coming to the Montebellos except we have all these gas rigs we got to watch out for. So this one here I was keeping south of, but I don't think I need to. I don't think it's there. A few oil rigs, we're dodging them. I think we can start bearing off to starboard down and start heading up to our right into the Montebellos. Trying to find a way in. It's quite shallow, we're at low tide, which is a bit of a bugger. What's the depth? Pretty spectacular. Look at that. Just going up this channel, um, and it's cool. We're going to go into a place called Champagne Bay, which, what better name is that to um, spend the night? The challenges are getting in. We're trying to find the deepest part of the channel. 
and if you look this way you can see it's a slightly different color and that looks shallow so we've just gone around that and then if you come on this side on this side around here it looks shallow over there as well so we're trying to fumble our way through There's Champagne Bay and we fit. So we're trying to decide whether we try to jab in or just anchor in this little spot here, which I think is pretty cool just here. Because that is where we're supposed to go through. And I reckon that's too shallow. Too, too shallow. You can hear the alarm going off too shallow. So we've just passed through the Faraday Channel, up through the island through here, and extremely shallow. But we're just passing over on our side here, Delta Island. That was one of the uh, sites, one of the three sites out here for the nuclear test by the British in the uh, 50s, I think it was, 40s or 50s. Unbelievable they could detonate something like that here in this pristine area. So we've just got through Faraday's Passage, or channel, and the island over there, you can see the mast on the other side, so we're going to anchor on the other side of that where the masts are. So this is Alpha Island, up on top there is where they detonated the nuclear bomb. So she's a little bit tight, we're just squeezing through. That one's right there. So it was an 80 metre wide gap, plenty of width, but the water's pushing through here at the moment, so a little bit exciting. Next episode, we explore the Montebello Islands, including a British atomic bomb test site, catch a couple of massive cray, and have a three metre hammerhead shark swim up to our boat. Suck it in or leave it in, it's not going to make much difference. So